viewers. Peter there, University of Nairobi School of Law, Kisumu Campus. This is the topic on social foundations and perspective of law. The ongoing topic right now is the social change. We have looked at various schools of thought and great theories that have defined the jurisprudence, uh, traditional jurisprudence, plus analytical jurisprudence. Well, the schools of thought that we have viewed have given us a lot of stuff that we can ride on. Well, the topic today, guess what? African customary law. Let us put African customary law in context and perspective and one personality and great African mind in the African jurisprudence is one other than Justice Taslim Olawale Elias, a Nigerian jurist, scholar, as well as judge. Olawale was born in Lagos, Nigeria, back in 1914. He passed away, he died in 1991 when he was 76. But Olawale served as attorney general, as professor of law in his country. He served as well as chief justice or chief judge, as well as a very, very high level minister for justice in Nigeria. Then he was appointed one of the honored 15 judges forming the ICJ, International Court of Justice, in which he became even the president during his time. Well, the same Justice Olawale left a blueprint in our study and knowledge of African jurisprudence, and that is the nature of African customary law. He did a good and a wide research on the African law, which was published by University of Manchester in 1956. The book has been in the reading process for many years. It has been reprinted and it tells it in, the, in depth about the nature of the African customary law. Well, uh, Olawale begins by dismissing some misunderstandings that created problem to the development of the African jurisprudence. And he gave the four category of uh, Western thinkers that misled the people in giving the African customary law its right definition and perspective. He started by the missionary and the administrative officer, anthropologist, and judicial officers. The four category of people that came together with the colonizers and, and worked in Africa gave the impression that the primitive law or the African customary law was no law. Well, Olawale dismisses this kind of blatant sign of ignorance and not being knowledgeable about the African cultures and legal traditions by saying that you cannot confuse some elements and practices that are mere uh, customs and uh, traditions that they are in all cultures, in all contexts. Such things like beating drums. Some African societies would beat drums to entertain the king or perhaps to beat such drums to invite members of a community towards an event, uh, especially when somebody died, such drums would be beaten and uh, beating of drums cannot translate into customary law. So there are such practices that people tend to confuse with the understanding of African customary law. But Olawale takes us through such practices as 
traditional marriages, which is an institution within the African customary law. And when the bridegroom uh, exchanges or gives some dowry or some gift to the family of the bride, it is not translated into the bride price or bride wealth, which is a Western interpretation of the dowry. The dowry right is meant for unwritten marriage contracts and such contracts, since they were not written, they would be significantly represented in legal symbols such as giving of animals to the family of the bridegroom. This is a sign that is significantly legal symbol showing that uh, we are bonded or binded together in marriage and there is force of law in the sense that if one party uh, breaches the contract then the the elders or the judge would uh, see to it if that kind of breach can result into divorce and if divorce is the way forward then the claim of the dowry is followed this was again a way of putting it hard for such marriages to break up and this is in compliance with observation of the contract in terms of rights and obligations and both husband and wife were tied to respect and observe such agreements well what's wrong in this it is just that it is not in writing and the modern society doing marriages or conducting marriages in church or in the state offices have to sign some documents in writing and both of them are recognized as marriages. Well, there are so many definitions that uh, Taslim Olawale has put in his analysis that make a lot of sense how much the law means to a community, to traditional community, how much people respect the rules of the law and uh, one of them is uh, Leon de Gude, a French jurist that defined the law as the, the règle de la droit, that is the rule of law. In principle, such rules must be recognized by a given community for the social, social cohesion and the running of the society. So in any given human society, law is there. A kind of legal framework must be there to keep the society together and progressing. And socially, we see that people respect such rules that are in place, whether they're in writing or they're customary. Well, this is again explaining to us the question of modernity and the mentality of people changing and the modern generation trying to deviate from the understanding of the African customer law. It is just because of such misconceptions that Olawale has tried, has attempted to address in his publication. I invite you to read the book, get copies. It is very nice and uh, it is still food for thought. But in the African jurisprudence, this is one of the areas that I would recommend. Peter, University of Nairobi School of Law, Kisumu Campus. Thank you so much for your promotion. Encourage us to go on with these lectures. Thank you.